Hey guys, my name is Leon and I go by the pilot handle Leon FPV and I want to talk to you guys today about a new frame that just came out called the Acro Brat. If you guys don't know, this is the newest frame from Tommy, aka oh my god. He is a Rotor Riot pilot and this is the latest product from his company. Now before we jump to the bench and go through this frame, I want to talk to you guys about a couple things. First, I have actually spent quite a bit of time with this frame, the Acro Brat, or like we like to call it, the Brat. I was fortunate to be one of the test pilots to help Tommy put this thing through its paces. So I want to take some of that knowledge and kind of pass it on to you guys uh, so you guys know what to expect with this frame. Also, I want to make mention of two resources that are available to you guys that you should check out. The first is a website. It's www.acrobrat.com. This is the companion website for this frame. Now, Tommy and his team have done a phenomenal job of compiling a lot of information about this frame. Uh, he talks about his goals, why he came up with this frame, uh, it talks about the design philosophy uh, for this frame, as well as the testing that went into it. Also, there is a list of parts uh, that have been used on this frame. A lot of these are parts that either Tommy or the test pilots have used, so we know it works, we know they fit. Aside from uh, acrobrat.com, there is also a Facebook page for this frame, and it is called The Acrobrats. You want to check that out. Uh, there's a lot of information. People are there. They're posting pictures of their builds. They're posting their flight video. Uh, if you have questions, chime in. Uh, Tommy, as well as all of the test pilots are there, and we're there to help. We'll help you out the best we can and point you in the right direction if you need it. So without any further ado, let's turn around and let's jump on the bench and let's take a look at this frame. All right, guys, welcome to the bench. As you can see, I've got the Brat unpacked and everything laid out and everything you see is what's going to come with your frame. Now, before I get into how everything comes together and how this whole system works, I want to talk to you about the simplicity of this frame. First, you're going to notice there's really not a lot of parts. You have your main base plate, two side plates, and a battery plate. Not only that, but there's no specific orientation as to how you need to start this build. This can be the front, or this can be the front. There's no front or back, and there's no top or bottom. All right? Now, that makes building a quad, especially if you're new, easy. Uh, nothing sucks. Some of us have been knee deep into a build, and you find out you put a camera plate on backwards. It's not fun. But with the Brat, you don't have to worry about that. Now, when you do install your ESC and your flight controller, then you're going to have to be wary of uh, orientation. For example, if you install your flight controller and the arrow is pointed to the front, this is going to be the front of the craft, and you're going to have to install your parts accordingly. Now, with aside from the frame, you've got some hardware, some bushings, and I'm going to talk about those in a little bit more detail. You have a piece of UMA grip battery pad. Uh, this is obviously for your battery plate. Uh, a note, you don't want to use this whole thing. You don't even want to use half. Uh, you want to use just a little bit about maybe they, that much. And what you're going to do is that's going to go into the middle of the battery pad and its main purpose is to make sure the battery doesn't slide. That's it. And I'm going to go into a little bit more detail as to why and you'll understand. And then you get this really cool, oh my god, battery strap. Uh, I want to geek out on this battery strap real quick. First of all, there is no metal buckle or plastic buckle. All right. Not only that, but this is a smooth strap. There's no big seam. Right. So this is the battery plate, and it really makes life easy. Up, through, around, and there you go. Um, nothing sucks more than when uh, you have. They either make these slots too small or you get a battery strap that's got a big seam in it. So uh, kudos for thinking about the strap. Now these bushings. In order to understand their purpose and what they're for, we got to talk about one of the goals that Tommy had for this frame and some of the design principles. So in order to do that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to clear this out and I'm going to bring in another brat. 
This is the prototype version of the Acrobrat that I've been flying and working with Tommy on. Now, when Tommy first designed this frame, one of the things he wanted to do was he wanted to design a frame where you could capture HD footage without the use of one of these. This is a GoPro session, and as you guys know, uh, this is no longer available. This has been discontinued. There is currently a void in the market, and we're not sure what's going to fill it and when, so we got to start looking at what we have available to us today. And that brings us to the run cam split. There is a new kit on the block as well. It is the Caddx Turtle. Uh, I actually happen to have one right here. And I'm going to be doing some, uh, some testing and trying that out. Tommy recently did a video on this. If you want to find out more, just go check that out. But right now what's available to us are these type of camera systems. If you guys aren't familiar, this is a system that provides not only your FPV feed, but it also records HD footage out of the same camera. In this particular case, 1080 at 60 frames per second. Now, some of you guys are familiar with the earlier versions of this camera. And yes, they weren't that great. It had really bad latencies, the picture would lock up, and sometimes it would just black out. But I will have to give RunCam credit because they at least gave it a shot, and not only that, but they stuck with it, and they've been working and making improvements. In this particular case, this is the RunCam Split Mini. Uh, all of the test pilots have been flying this. Tommy's been flying this. And I have to say, it's I'm pretty impressed. Uh, I was a little worried as well as a little skeptical. Latency is not bad. It's it's actually not noticeable. I don't even notice it if you run it at 1080, 60 frames per second. There is one side effect of this, which is if your SD card fills up, the screen will lock up. So make sure you run you fly with a fresh SD card, or at least dump what you've got on it and and fly it with an empty one. Now. With a system like this, uh, one side effect is Jello in the video, in the HD feed. And that comes from vibration. So to counter that, what Tommy did was he actually designed this frame in two pieces. And I'm actually going to bring, let me bring another brat out. This is, <clears throat> this is one that's currently under construction. And I'm going to pull this apart real quick. You can see how this brat comes comes together. Take this out. Pull this out. Also, you guys will notice this is uh, donning some 3D printed parts from Brain 3D. Uh, he did design some parts for it, so go check him out, uh, Brain 3D. Now, what he did was I'm going to put, I'm going to put this together so you guys can get a better idea of this. I'm going to slide this in here and this will come together. I'm not going to put the other set of screws in here. So basically what Tommy did was he put the frame in two pieces. He designed the frame to have two sections. This section is considered to be the dirty section or the noisy section. And the reason why we call it that is because this is where your noisemakers are, your motors and your props. These are what cause the vibrations throughout a mini quad. Now, what he did was he isolated these onto one section. Then the run cam split or the Caddx, the camera is housed in what is called the clean section. Okay. And the idea is going back to these bushings is that is how the clean section and the dirty section interface with each other. If you notice, I've already installed the grommets here. Uh, a quick tip, when it comes to installing these, especially uh, the firmer grommets or bushings, you don't want to jab this or stab this with a tool. What I would recommend is take some liquid dish soap, put a little bit on there, and push it in. And it'll actually go in a lot easier. And obviously make sure you rinse and dry afterwards. But the way this fits is, this is the clean plate, and this is the dirty section. And if you notice, there's tabs here. It just slides on. There's the front, there's the back. And I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna put this section on here. Front, the back, and then obviously the camera plate. 
I'm not going to go ahead and put the screws in. Now, if you notice that the clean section, which is this top half, it the only connections to the dirty section is these four corners where these grommets are installed. And the purpose of these grommets or bushings is to isolate the camera from vibration. And as a result, you should have jello free footage. Okay, so that's how the bushings work and that's their purpose. Now, I'm gonna point out here that the bushings, you notice they do come in colors. This is not for uh, looks. Uh, there's a reason behind it. Uh, the white bushings, these are actually soft. The red bushings are a little firmer, blue bushings are even more firm, and the black is the firmest bushing. Now, when you go to assemble your brat, the first thing you need to do is pick which bushing you're going to use. How do you do this? Well, what we've been doing is kind of looking at temperature and where you are. For example, I am in Florida. It is extremely hot. So therefore, I started off with the black bushing. And actually, I've been running the black bushing and I've been having some pretty good results. You know, obviously, once it gets into the heat and the humidity, it'll soften up a little bit and it'll kind of change its properties and it will have a different effect. Now, aside from temperature, yes, there is a difference. Some motors are smoother than others. For example, on my prototype, I am running the Brother Hobby T1s. These are 1407. 4100 kV and you will notice I mean if you guys know about this motor it is a very notchy motor it has some really strong magnets on this particular build I went with the brother hobby 1507s 4100 kVs and they are much smoother now it's really impossible for us to try to figure out what motor prop combination and how much vibration it's going to it's going to create. So that's why we went ahead and, and gave you a selection of grommets. Now, my suggestion is when you start off, uh, you know, if you're in a cooler climate, maybe start off with the white grommet. If you're in a warmer climate, start off with the black grommet. But either way, I would suggest you start off at the extremes. And the reason why is if you start off with, for example, the red or the blue grommet and you put your brat together and you send it up and you've got some jello in your feet, you kind of don't know which way you got to go. I mean, it's not a big deal. There's only four different types, but I would suggest you start at the end. You know, if you start off with a black grommet, you've got jello, step down to the blue, and at least you have a general direction as to which way you got to go. So that is how the grommets work. Now... There's also a set of grommets as well, uh, corresponding grommets. These are for your ESCs and your flight controller as well. Assembly. Now let's talk about putting this frame together and building your Acro Brat. Mind you, I'm not going to do a complete build video here, uh, meaning I am not going to show you how to solder. I'm not going to show you how to connect and configure your electronics. I'm going to kind of assume you guys know how to do that. If you don't, there are a lot of resources out there available to you. Uh, what I want to do is I just want to show you uh, some tips and some tricks to getting your brat put together. Uh, maybe put it, give you a little bit of an order of assembly and uh, hopefully make the process easier for you. So we discussed earlier uh, about the bushings and how to choose your bushings. I would tell you that should be the first thing you do. Choose which bushing you want. Take your bushings and insert them into the designated locations. So these bushings that are for your clean section, you're going to go here. And the bushings for your flight controller and ESC stack are going to go here in the middle. Now, when you're ready to put this frame together, if you're going to put this thing as a whole, after you have your grommets inserted and if you're going to dry fit everything, what I would suggest is take one of your camera plates and install all of the standoffs on one side. So you should have something like this. And this one, obviously, it's got the 3D printed part on it. Uh, if you decide to get that part, that'll stay there. But you're going to have something like this. 
And you want to keep this uh, technique in mind, especially later on the road, down the road when you go to uh, make repairs or do maintenance or you know swap out parts on your brat. There's no need to do both, undo both ends of the standoff. Just do one side and pop it off and you're good to go. All right, now I wanna show you uh, what that looks like on a built brat. Uh, since I only have my prototype one here. Um, here it is, I already went ahead. If I wanted to get into this frame and do some work, which trust me, guys, I've opened this thing up at least a hundred times. Uh, to either fix electronics or reroute something or tweak something and I can honestly say this thing is a joy just removed the standoffs on one side you're going to remove your screw and spacer for the camera and then you're gonna pry one it off this is gonna come out pull your battery plate out Set that aside and voila you are now inside your brat and you have full access to everything and to all of the electronics and as I mentioned you can see the layout here uh, if you decide to run the uh, run cam split or the Cadex turtle camera goes here the first stack is on the first set of standoffs flight controller ESC VTX and my receiver I tucked it underneath and uh, if you're running a cap, I usually like to run a big fat cap. Uh, I usually kind of relocate them. And I stuck it out here on the arm. This is actually kind of out of place. But uh, there you go. There's a lot of room in this little 3-inch frame. And I absolutely love it. Um, sometimes when you get down to these smaller quads, uh, you don't have this much room. You only have a single stack. And you got to try to stack everything on top of it. Not the case with the Acro Brad. Also, one other thing I wanted to mention, some of you guys, you might not want to run the run cam split or the Cadex Turtle. Some of you guys might want to run just a regular camera. I know some of you have talked about uh, running, you can run a regular FPV camera. And then some of you guys have talked about even getting the DVR, 20 by 20 DVRs. Guess what? There's room for it. So there you go. Now, <clears throat> When it comes to installing the electronics on the Brat, a majority of the electronics can be installed on the base plate, just like this. As you can see, this is one that I've, I have a build. This is my build in progress. I know some of you guys might be wondering what's up with this long XT60, but uh, I actually like to, I have a bad luck with XT60s. Sometimes I either come up too short and then the battery leads are not long enough. Sometimes the battery leads are different sizes so what I actually do is I kind of wrap this down and then uh, when the battery plate is here and the battery sit on top I kind of cinch it down with the uh, with the battery strap so but feel free to put it where you like you've got plenty of real estate now when it comes to installing the electronics like I said you can put you can work off of this base plate and you can build most of the quad without even having to uh, assemble the clean section and, and putting it on so uh, what I did was obviously 3D parts, did my motors, did my wires, did my EC, made those connections. I'm gonna go ahead later on, I'm gonna put in my camera system, VTX, everything. And like I mentioned before, you wanna dry fit everything first before you start making connections. Uh, it can save you a lot of time and headache and you can hopefully identify any issues or fitment issues uh, early. So you can do most of this and then obviously when you're ready to install your camera what you would do is assuming you have let's say if you're using the split you would mount your boards here and then you can you can get away with mounting the camera on one side and it'll stay in place like this okay now also when you mount your electronics in this quad uh, be weary of your USB ports. Uh, some people have used really tall standoffs uh, here and the USB is coming up a little high. Uh, if that happens, just use a shorter standoff. You don't need that much room. Uh, the production version is actually taller, a little bit taller inside than the, uh, than the prototype. Also, when it comes to mounting your run cam split 
if you're going to do this, make sure you use the brass standoffs that come with the split and do not soft mount anything. Okay. Use the brass fittings. And if you notice, don't do not soft mount the camera. You don't need to. That's why you have the bushings. Let the frame do the work for you and make life easy. So, uh, so just make sure you do that. Keep that in the back of your mind as well. Also, when you install the run cam split, make sure you make sure you put your boards in this order. Uh, basically, as you, if you could see that the USB is on this side, uh, it can be easy to accidentally flip this over, and un and unfortunately you won't have enough room to access your USB. So, so orientate your boards this way. And once your plate is there, you should have, uh, put this, slide this back in. Let's get this back piece in. Uh, once that's in, uh, you can see here, you have easy access to your USB plugs. I can make FC configuration changes and I can download my photos, everything. No problem. Don't even have to take this apart. So, and that's, uh, you know, that's one of the advantages of, of this system like this, you know, with a GoPro as much as great as they are, they are expensive. You can also forget them <laughs> in places and you have to worry about charging them with the system like this. As long as you have a flight pack, you can record. So if you're flying, you can record. All right. So, uh, so that's about that for, uh, for assembling, uh, the electronics. Now, with regards to, I mentioned the, uh, the Uma grip and the battery pad. Let me do this. Let me put this back in. You're going to use a small piece in the middle. This might be even a little too big, but you're going to use a small piece in the middle. And the idea is that when your frame is assembled like this, let me grab a battery here. And I fly these really big 850 four cell CNHL batteries. Uh, they're good packs. Uh, they are heavy though. But the idea is when your battery sits in place, you want it to make contact when you cinch it down to make contact with the clean section. Okay. And that'll help alleviate some any vibrations that might get through and make it to the camera. So. Again, don't use the entire piece of Uma grip. Just use a little piece and you know what? You'll have some spare. All right, guys. So now you've got your brat built. You're ready to rip. Uh, what can you expect? Well, one of the things you're going to be surprised with this frame is this is a three inch frame, but it feels like a five. And the footage that you can get out of this little guy is is really amazing. Um, there's footage out there uh, on YouTube. Uh, Tommy's been uh, promoting uh, some of the pilots for the Acro Brats. Uh, I've got some footage on my YouTube videos. Um, check out the Facebook page, and you're gonna see uh, you're gonna see some footage, and you're gonna be really surprised if if nobody told you it was a three inch, you you wouldn't believe them. So, and how does that happen? Well. This is what you can expect. Well, first of all, this frame is a true X configuration. I know that's not the most scientific way, but uh, let's say from motor to motor, there we go. And from here to here, it's the same. So this is a true X. It's not a stretch X. It's kind of an optical illusion. I think it has to do with the fact that the body is long and, uh, and you have a lot of real estate here uh, down the middle. But it is actually a true X. Um, it is a durable frame. Uh, not too many guys have broken one. I think Tommy had to throw his into a wall, but, uh, but it is, it is a durable frame. So go hard, man. This thing will, this thing will, will, will stand up to it. Also, just a side note, this is not a light frame. This is not meant to be in one of those ultra light three inch builds. Um, you know, for example, something like, uh, let's say the, uh, the, the Rotorex switchback, 
Um, I actually have one of those I'm planning on building. And I've, heard, and I've heard good things about it. And it is a really, you can do some really cool ultralight builds. But this is not an ultralight frame. So don't expect that. Um, let me just grab a scale here. Let me just show you this. Uh, this quad, uh, I put the hardware back in it and everything. So this is ready to fly. Um, here we are. This is grams. You guys can see that. This thing right now with no battery is coming in at 194, 194 grams, which isn't bad. Uh, I fly these big CNHL batteries. Uh, this thing is 850 ma and 4S. Uh, these packs, CNHL, they're known to be pretty dense and pretty heavy. So once I put that on there, I'm at 306, which it's not bad. Uh, but I know there's those out there that think this is just too much weight. Uh, and I'm going to... Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna disagree with you. Um, this is designed for freestyle. Uh, personally, I like my quads to have a little bit of meat on them. Um, it just it just helps me to feel the quad in the sticks, and also I think it also kind of helps with the flight characteristics for this quad and why it feels like a uh, why it feels like a like a bigger quad because it's it's not gonna get blown around by the wind and it's gonna be locked in. Also, I like a little bit of a chunkier quad because, uh, you know, in situations when you're flying and you're cutting throttle, I want to know that the quad is going to sink predictably. Um, I know, it, and, and that comes in handy, especially if you're doing like proximity flying or you're trying to hit some gaps. So, also, uh, this quad is designed for top mount battery. So, I'm going to slide this in and show you what it looks like. <clears throat> and you're gonna read, um, you're gonna check out that Acrobrat website and you're gonna read about a, a, and the idea of a center of mass. And this is what it looks like. And this is with a big battery. This is, this is a big battery. And uh, you know, one of the things that I really love about this frame is that it is a top mount. I struggle with bottom mount batteries. I, I don't know what to do with the straps. It's, it's, it's cumbersome. I gotta sit down to put my battery on. It's just, it's, it's really, I'm really a klutz when it comes to that. Uh, but with the Brat, I don't have to worry about that. Not only that, but if you guys notice this, um, going back to center of mass, uh, if you notice this, this is the prop line for this quad. So let me see if I can line this up. So that's the prop line. Look at how tight. That was what, 194 grams, I believe? Uh, look how tight the weights are and the mass of this quad is brought to that prop line. So you have the quad itself mechanically here, and then we've got this battery here. So let me bring that scale back. Yeah. Let me see here. So this pack, it's 114 grams. And the quad is 194, so uh, so when it sits, it's that's actually really good. That's that's a nice compact weight management, <laughs> if you will. And if you guys have flown the Remix, um, that is a special quad. It's probably one of my favorite quads, do honestly next to the Brat. And uh, I just love the way that thing flies because again, the same principles were applied. Uh, everything was brought as close as possible uh, to the prop line and as a result you have a quad that it doesn't have that pendulum effect I know a lot of three inch quads they mount the battery at the bottom and especially if you're running like a four inch or a four cell uh, especially a big battery like this uh, you know you've got that pendulum effect uh, also uh, another benefit that I love about this top mount is it is turtle mode friendly um, your props are not pinned to the ground if you flip over. Uh, most of the times, a lot of times, this thing will land upright if you're lucky, uh, just because the way the weight if, of the quad is. So if you spin out, it'll land on its feet, hopefully. So Acrobrat kind of sticks. Um, again, like I said, turtle mode. 
you end up upside down, notice, you know, you really only have one prop that'll be in contact with the ground, but, you know, you've got room. And this thing turtle modes beautifully. I, I use turtle mode quite a bit. Um, just kind of sucks when you crash and you snapped off all the props, but, uh, but yeah, that's the, uh, that's the beauty of this frame. And, and I think you guys are going to like it. So if you would, uh, click like, subscribe, uh, check out the acrobrat.com. Check out the Facebook page, the acrobrats. Uh, this frame is available. It's on the Rotor Riot store. So, uh, so check it out and, uh, and pick one up. I think you guys will really like it. And uh, if you guys have any questions, man, hit us up on the uh, hit us up on the uh, the good old social media, and we'll see what we can do. And you can follow me on Instagram as well. I'm on Instagram at leonfpv. Uh, there I post a lot of my builds, and as well as other FPV uh, related content. So, so uh, so till next time, guys. This is the Acro Brat. I really hope you guys give it a shot, and I think you're gonna love it. And, and enjoy. Thanks.